everyone! Today I'm going to be showing you how I made this digital adaptation for Station 2. This is one of the three stations in Activity 1.13, titled The Traces We Leave Behind. This station is on fingerprints. And first I just want to say that whoever made this over here, this slide, um, I am so grateful for this. This was a lifesaver. I have all of these activities for I think the first unit or at least 1.1 so I've just been coming in here making a few edits here and there so my students are doing this mostly individually or in groups I put them into breakout rooms and they just work in their notebook so we did station one on Friday and also a huge shout out to Heidi Hisrick for making this hair comparison lab this was amazing um, I just looked at it copied and pasted the link in here and had this chart ready for them to fill out. My students are using physical notebooks for this class. I have a table of contents and I also have a, a digital notebook template for them to refer to so they know like what goes on each page and how it should kind of look like. Here I have a few conclusion questions and this was where we stopped on Friday. So today we started with station two, patterns in our prints. I told students to, actually I should pull up that DL uh, PBS. Okay, so this, this is my distance learning version of the first unit's um, notebook template. And if I just go all the way down here, Okay, so for station two, this was what I had prepared. They would take notes and then they would sketch each one of these prints. There are four and they would also add some notes. Um, they would copy down the common minutiae, and there's 10 of them, into this chart down here and then they would review this as a group. And then they would move on to the actual fingerprint analysis. So here, if you're wondering where I'm looking, I'm looking at my huge monitor that is behind my laptop, which is why um, it might look like I'm looking over past you guys. Um, okay, so here is the chart that I prepared for them. There are... actually, let's go over here. So I told my students to click here. I have linked this uh, PowerPoint that I made on Google Slides. I am falling in love with all the with the variability and like flexibility of Google Slides. The last activity I made was also on Google Slides. I just love the versatility of uh, this um, what do I call this like technology. Even though it was giving me quite a hard time today, so I'm gonna walk you through the process of how I made this. First, I edit the page so that it is that of a normal piece of paper, so 8.5 by 11. I am... I'm just gonna delete these because we're not... actually, I'll leave one here. Alright, and then... so here is the chart. Uh, there are two fingerprints that they are gonna be looking at, and... I'm going to pull this over here so you can see that these are the two fingerprints that were found at the scene. So there was a fingerprint on the note that was left for Anna and a fingerprint or partial fingerprint on the piece of glassware that had uh, fallen on the ground. The ridge patterns, they already took notes on these so they can identify these uh, just by you know observing the fingerprints. and. So here in PLTW, they have whoops, they have instructions for identifying minutiae. I accidentally highlighted this and I don't know how to get rid of it. Oh, there it is. Okay. So they have instructions to identify five minutiae within each of these prints. And the original document that I had that came with the notebook templates the document had just like a copy and paste of all of these 
as you see them here and as you can see it's really small so it's like students can't really you know see the details to identify minutiae so i opened it here you can also zoom in what i did was i decided to copy and paste so if i copy you see it shows up partially there's another picture down here so let me just copy and paste that over all right so now what i have here is to uh, parts to a fingerprint and then I expanded them so that they would fit fill up most of the page and you can see that the quality is is still pretty good for an expanded picture especially something like a fingerprint it's a little bit blurry but at least you can still see oh how am I gonna think okay so it's easier for me to align these if I change the background color so to change the background color, I click on background, I'm going to change it to orange, that's how I had it. So now, okay, I can see why it was not aligned. So now this is aligned, and I believe this first one was the fingerprint from the scene found on the handwritten note. So fingerprint from the scene found on handwritten note. And then I just change the setting so that it's uh, bold and it stands out. And there it is. That's one slide. This, um, on its own like this, you can see that these are all movable. And I don't like it being movable because students are going to be working on these and identifying the minutiae. So I would actually have students make copies of my PowerPoint and then work in groups on the same slide. So each group is going to have their own copy. Everyone's going to be contributing to identify all of these minutiae. I don't want them to be able to move these images around. So what you can do is download the current slide as a JPEG. It's downloading right now. And then I would open up another slide. Actually, I don't want that with all the text boxes so I usually open up one of the ones that is completely blank so that one and then now I'm gonna upload what I just downloaded as an as a background all right here it is okay so now it is the background and you may notice that I'm trying to like, click on things trying to move things around and nothing's moving so this is great because unlike this one, students can't like mess around like, you know, add words and things like that. So this one would be a mess and I don't want that anymore. I have this. This is perfect for students to then use these shapes and identify, for example, this one over here. It looks like a fork. So I'm going to have students use the shape to indicate that minutiae and then change the color change the pixel so that it kind of stands out and you can see like oh no it's right there and then they are going to label it so using a text box they're going to type in the minutiae's name and they are also going to change or highlight oops. they are going to highlight this so that it stands out be yellow or something like that there it is so there is a fork and this is great because students can interact with this without moving any of the, the images the background images since it's like a solid background and they can just copy and paste and find other minutiae whoops i'm just dragging that all over the place so let's see if I can find there's one over here. I forgot what that one's called. Um so if I go back here to the instructions, that would be an I over here. So students can I just copy and paste this and change text to an I. There it is. There is the second minutiae. So I feel that students should have the chance to you know, look at these fingerprints close up 
enlarged and be able to identify these minutiae, there's already so much taken away from them in terms of this whole distance learning situation where they can't do the magnetic uh, latent fingerprinting. So at least this is somewhat interactive. It gets them talking, working in groups, and it's a great uh, activity for them to uh, build on towards, you know, solving this mystery. So I actually over here, I already made all of these. So these are all backgrounds now. They are non-adjustable, each one of these. And just to show you how I made all of these, again, I just opened up each one of these images, copied and pasted the top and the bottom. You can kind of see there's like a sliver over here showing you that these were two separate images. I just put them together, downloaded them as a image, uploaded it as a background, and then this is the this is a reminder for them to fill out their chart. And this is the activity that I decided to digitize. Um, and that is 1.13 station 2. That is where we ended today. Um, my students, actually, we did not get to start this until way later in the class because when I first made these, the Google Slides wasn't saving everything. So everything that I made, like I could see it on my side, but it wasn't saved. So when I shared it with students, they couldn't see it on their side. So that's why I uh, ended up making it like this. How I actually made this was slightly different from the technique that I showed you. Um, so here this looks really nice. But the way I made the rest of these, I actually used uh, the snip function. So I don't know if you guys can see it. Let me bring this over. So if you click on Windows and then you just type SNIP, you're going to see the snipping tool and just click on it, it opens. And what I did, I'm just going to move this away, just, you know, for future reference. This is another way you could do it. You can make, okay, well, I'm not going to actually use this one, so I don't care if there's something in the corner. But once you snip it, pretty much crop it, you can save it, and then save it on your desktop, and then be able to upload directly from your desktop. As the background so that's how i did it during class as you know i had 30 students waiting on me because they couldn't access my original slides but yeah this is how i made this here um i have two different well they're the same instructions one is just uh turned into a background so you can't tamper with this the other one is all the individual components to my instructions. I have included this so that you can take this out, make any changes if you want, and then just delete this one. Or you can just use this one and delete my original. And yeah, that is my adaptation for this small little activity. Just wanted to share this with you guys in case you guys were thinking of, you know, having students analyze this. And I just have every group share their copy with me so that I can go in and see that they have done their work. Another thing up here in the directions is I have each student choose a color and they're going to be going in with that color. So the example here, I use red, but I should see different colors on each of these images indicating that every single student in the group was participating on this activity. It's just a great way to you know, hold them accountable, even since I don't see them every single second as they move around from group to group. Um, and it's something tangible that they can turn in really easily onto Schoology. So yeah, I have included the link for this in my description box, as well as to this slide in case you are interested. Um, I did not make Station 3 yet, however, I... I know someone else has made it, and the, uh, the links are somewhere in the Facebook page, so there's that. Yeah. So 
I hope that this was helpful. If this was helpful to you, it would really mean a lot to me if you could uh, like my video and perhaps subscribe to see future videos like this. And thank you for watching.